We're now ready to talk about the cross product of vectors. Now recall that the dot product inputs two vectors and outputs a number and is defined in any number of dimensions. By contrast, the cross product inputs two vectors and outputs a vector and it only works in three dimensions. So it's defined as follows. Suppose we have two vectors a equals a1, a2, a3 and b equals b1, b2, b3. So their cross product, denoted by a cross b, is defined as follows. So informally, it's the determinant of the matrix i, j, k, a1, a2, a3, b1, b2, b3. And here i, j, and k are the unit vectors in the x, y, and z directions. So i is 1, 0, 0, j equals 0, 1, 0, and k equals 0, 0, 1. Now, I've put this determinant in quotes because in the definition of determinant, every entry of the matrix is supposed to be a number. We're not supposed to put in random things like vectors. But if we ignore that and just expand this as a product of diagonals, or sum of products of six diagonals, then we'll get the correct formula for the cross product. So it's i times a2, b3, minus a3, b2, plus j times a3, b1, minus a1, b3, plus k times a1, b2, minus um, a2, b1. And I can write this as a vector, so the first component is the coefficient of i. So it's a2, b3, minus a3, b2. <coughs> the second component is a3, b1, minus a1, b3. And the third component is a1, b2, minus a2, b1. For example, what's i cross j? Well, this is 1, 0, 0, cross 0, 1, 0. So the first component is a2, b3, which is 0, minus a3, b2, which is also 0. So that's 0. Second component is a3, b1, which is 0, minus a1, b3, which is also 0. The third component is a1, b2, which is 1, minus a2, b1, which is 0. So I get 0, 0, 1 otherwise known as k. Now let's try j cross i. So this is 0, 1, 0 cross um, 1, 0, 0. So the first component is a2, b3, which is 0, minus a3, b2, which is 0. The second component is a3, b1, which is 0, minus a1, b3, which is 0. The third component is a1, b2, which is 0, minus a2, b1, which is 1. So I have minus 1 here, and the vector I get is minus k. Well, that's weird. i cross j is not the same as j cross i. Did I make a mistake? No. In fact, cross product is not commutative. In fact, the opposite is true, namely a cross b is equal to minus b cross a. So this is what we saw in the example. In the general case, you can see from the formula that if you switch the role of a and b everywhere, then you're going to multiply each component of this vector by minus 1. For example, the first component would be b2 a3 minus b3 a2. And you can see that that's minus what we had before. An important example of this, by the way, is that if you take any vector a and cross it with itself, you get 0, because a cross a is minus a cross a. That forces it to be 0. Now, the cross product has a nice geometric interpretation. And this has three parts. The first part 
is that a cross b is perpendicular to both a and b. The second part is that the length of a cross b is the length of a times the length of b times sine theta, where theta is the angle between a and b, like this. So in the interpretation of dot product, we had cosine theta. In the interpretation of cross product, we have sine theta. And this expression here, this can also be thought of as the area of the parallelogram generated by A and B. So we take another copy of B and another copy of A to make a parallelogram. And the area of this parallelogram is the length of the cross product. So it's perpendicular to A and B, so it's going sort of like this. It's a little hard to draw, but this is supposed to be perpendicular to both A and B. Um, and we know how long it is, so that determines it up to one last choice. So there are two possible vectors that are perpendicular to A and B and have this length. We can either go like this, or we could go in the other direction like that. But in fact, we want the first one. I want the solid one and not the dotted one. And that follows from the third property, which is that A, B, and A cross B satisfy the right-hand rule. Okay, so this vector up here, this is the one which is actually A cross B. This one down here is minus A cross B. Okay, so you take your right hand, your four fingers are pointing towards A, you curl them towards B, and then your thumb is pointing in the direction of A cross B. So let's prove this geometric interpretation on the next page. To prove the geometric interpretation of cross product, first observe that if I have a third vector C, then the dot product of C with A cross B is the determinant of the matrix C1, C2, C3, A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3. So this follows directly from the definition of cross product. You should go convince yourself of this. All right, now in particular, if I take C to equal A, what happens? Well then, this, in this matrix, the first row is the same as the second row. And if you have any matrix in which two of the rows are the same, then the determinant is zero. This follows from the definition of determinant, and you can also see it from the geometric interpretation, because then you're talking about the volume of a parallelopiped, which has been squashed onto a two-dimensional plane, so its volume is zero. Now for the same reason, b dot a cross b equals zero. And so this tells us that a cross b is perpendicular to both a and b. So that's the first part of the geometric interpretation. To prove the rest, now let's choose c to be a unit vector which is perpendicular to a and b such that A, B, and C satisfy the right-hand rule. And for this to be well-defined, let's assume here that A and B are non-zero and not parallel. Otherwise, the cross product will be zero, and it's not so interesting. Okay, so the picture is here's A, here's B, 
and then I have a vector c which has length 1 and is perpendicular to both, and a, b, and c satisfy the right-hand rule. Now, we know because the cross product is perpendicular to both a and b, we know that a cross b has to point in the same direction as c, or the opposite direction. So a cross b is lambda times c for some scalar lambda. And I want to solve for this scalar lambda. So what I want to show is that lambda is the length of a times the length of b times sine theta. And then the cross product will point in the correct direction and have the correct length. Okay, so to solve for lambda, let's look at the equation c dot a cross b. Okay, now by definition of lambda, this is c dot lambda c. And then I can pull out the lambda to write this as lambda times c dot c. And since I assumed that c is a unit vector, the length of c is 1, so c dot c is 1, so this is just lambda. On the other hand, c dot a cross b is the volume of the parallel pipe bed generated by a, b, and c. And in fact, it's plus or minus, so we have to check um, the right-hand rule. So it will be plus if c, a, and b satisfy the right-hand rule. So if you, you have to sort of twist your right hand in a kind of a funny way to see this. But if you twist your right hand so that your um, fingers are pointing at c and then curl towards a, then your thumb will point towards b. So it's actually a plus sign. Now, since c is a unit vector, which is perpendicular, to a and b, then this volume is just the area of the parallelogram generated by a and b, which is length of a times length of b times sine theta. So comparing these two equations, I get that lambda is indeed equal to length of a times length of b times sine theta, which is what I wanted to prove. So that's the explanation of the geometric interpretation of cross-product.